How do you do? Welcome to American Black Metal Review. Today is bound to get run so high, you know, United States of America. Don't let God bless America. We don't believe in God here. Anyway, bullshit aside, this one is Eternal Bloodshed. Highness Portrait. Self-financed CD by the very band from Columbus, Ohio. Some 31 minutes of style that could be described as combination of black, death, and trash. No, there are a couple of indicators which would tell you not to trust this band, not to check it out. I, however, am proved better, that is, otherwise, and I'll explain why and what I mean. Now, this CD over here is, in fact, CDR. CDR, self-financed. That's the number one indicator. Don't go near that shit. It's gonna explode on your face. Well, not exactly explode, but deliver you a sort of a disappointment. I mean, usually, most of the bands who don't get the proper record deal probably suck. This is something that I've explained many times, and I know there are plenty of bands or people who disagree, usually because, I guess, they all, they have their own self finance CDs, and they're like, I don't suck. Now, the thing is, usually it's a good indication. If you don't get a deal, don't do a CD. However, every now and then you get some decent to listen, even though it's self-financed. And luckily, Eternal Bloodshed is one of those bands. Now, the other pointer, combining two different uh, styles in together and then expecting the things to be good. Bah! It's another warning sign. Usually, it means the band is way too, uh, way too much spread around to make a good impact. It either sucks with the trash, death, or black styles, and then you're a little bit like uh, trying to gather up those shrapnels and figuring out how the mirror was before you broke it. Now, luckily, once again, proven wrong here. What a high nose sport rate is indeed doing is being able to do bling, a self-finance CD worth listening to, bling, combining these elements and making it to worthwhile combination. No, the energy on this album is pretty pretty nice. And that is one of the so-called driving forces with the album. Now you have some riffs and some sort of a grooviness which could be taken from trash metal. I'll give it that. Now when you add some girly vocals and some of the riffs, maybe the heaviness on the album, it more inclined, more or less uh, is inclined towards death metal. But there's a certain level of blackness and those screaminess which then again makes black metal enter the game and hence what you have here is combination of death trash and black metal done nicely not as nicely though as i would say usurper from united states of america or destroyer 666 previously from australia is doing but definitely something is tearing up with this debut album now obviously since it's the debut album and also a self-financed one means that the band is having a lot of potential and who knows Maybe after a release or two, they will be coming, notching up the whole game here. Uh, I don't know if this would have been worth a li uh, listen or worth a release as a demo. Probably it would have meant that this would have been more, well, forgivable. That is, usually you tend to turn a little bit of a blind eye where's it, what, on the sound and the songwriting and all that stuff if it's a demo. After all, demo is not the, something that is ready to be, you know, sold and distributed. But anyway, it doesn't move, move or change the fact um, that sound-wise this is very, very ready. And also those uh, vocal styles, I think it's very, very solid. Now, what is good here in consensus, consistency is that uh, there are no drops here. I mean, the whole album is very, very consistent in quality, so uh, you pretty much get what you deserve and you're what you're asking when you have heard the first track. And from that point to the end, it's pretty much the same level of quality. However, since there are no drops, it also means, not necessarily means, but in this case it means that there are no real peak moments. You really don't get that level of catchiness, what you might be expecting, especially when things like trash metal is uh, mentioned here. I mean, you would kind of want more catchiness or something more memorable with, uh, with albums such as this. It's not a big thing, but it's still something that, in my opinion, is missing here. You know, the magic element, like everything blends a little bit too much 
you know, as a one whole thing. That is, it's going to be a lot more catchy. It could have these hooks that totally just, you know, get under your skin and you keep remembering them afterwards. Um, I gave this quite a few spins and all I basically remember is it's very uh, passionate, it's aggressive, it's fast tempo, and it's blending these different elements. But if you were to ask me, like, today, not to mention later on, like, hey, what, which one is your favorite track? I couldn't name one. Now, that tells, a lot, tells you a lot about me as a listener, but also I doubt that many people, unless you give this a handful more spins, will get you, like, remembering individual tracks. Now, be it as it may, uh, I urge you to check out the band. It's definitely quite interesting, if not even memorable, and I think it will be better in the years to come as long as the band keeps making more songs, doing better songwriting, and polishing the overall stuff here. Definitely a potential case for a future big band to be. Check it out, and let me know what you think.